Welcome. Uh, let's talk of the day, so then it's a party. Um, before the party, let's see how you can how we can learn, how we can teach, not learn, Nick's in five minutes. Yeah, that's sort of what I was expecting. I see, I'm reading now the faces, because there was a, uh, you're bullshitting. Um, back there, no way. Uh, yeah, yeah, so a lot of skepticism. But let's go slow, I'll get to there. There is a whole story behind how I, came up with this title, uh, but I'm going to tell it at the end. So let's focus first on how to teach, right? Anything. So maybe I should, I was already forgot, but I'm a, I work at Flux, I'm a software engineer. Actually, I never actually wanted to be a software engineer, that's the first thing. Uh, all, and then I, I used to play basketball, I also didn't want to play basketball. So I do a lot of things that I don't want to do. And, you know, and I, why I started to be, play basketball is because all the, the players were traveling for free, so I joined the team, so I traveled. I actually didn't know what to do after the high school, so I went to faculty and I joined the student organization international one, so I could, you know, I travel. So I studied just so I could travel. Um, and actually, I started working as a software engineer because I wanted to travel, because I could work remotely. Um, so I did all these bunch of things um, just so I could travel. But all along the way, I had I can still remember, there, there were fun, amazing teachers that in my primary school, I can still remember to this day, and they, they escort, like, whenever I try to teach, I always try to remember how I felt in primary school when, the, uh, when my, my most amazing teacher, which I still uh, am in contact to this day. I had really good coaches at basketball, they really inspire me. Faculty, the same. Professors, not all of them, but very few actually, but they were really amazing. They really know how to connect to you. And, well, there we go. Um, so, but on the flip side, I had some horrible teachers, professors. I had the most, the, the most horrible coach. You know, I used to play basketball in the day where you could still, well, hit kids, <laughs> right? It's true. I mean, it was not really a physical pain, but you felt the pain. Uh, so I don't want to be that kind of a teacher. I want to be the teacher to inspire. And I, I think it's also, in your case, if you are teaching anything, you want to teach to in a good way. So, yeah, I want to in inspire. Now, second part, which is how to teach Nick's. Now, I have no doubt you all know how to use Nick's, and I think you can come up with a curriculum for the class that will last a month if it needs to. Right? There is so much to teach. But I don't think that's that actually, and as engineers, this is exactly what we do. We get the problem, we write the curriculum, and then we get people in front and we teach them. Now, they can be different settings, but I don't think that's actually the, the problem when it comes to teaching. As I said, you, will, you are most, if with enough time, you are all already capable of doing this. So I cannot teach you there anything. But there is one important thing that I think we all neglect, um, forget, really, uh, me, myself included, um, and that's okay. I think it's just um, our bias. We are engineers, so it's easy to, you know, not talk to people, not interact with people, and just, um, I will now imitate my professor from 
math professor, talk to you with a really slow voice and explain three hours of the talk. And it's really, I still, I could be the, the most magnificent PhD professor, but the first moment I got, I ran out of the room. Like, excuse for, you know, I need to go to the toilet, and I was out of the classroom. So, I think we forget the non-technical part of the, of the talks. Um, we are forgetting that we're teaching people, and we forget to get to know your audience. Um, Having the best curriculum will not do any good if you don't present it at the, for the right audience. Simply, it won't. Um, sort of, you can say, now I'm not saying you can know your audience and they will just, by magic, <laughs> learn how to use NICs. No, you still need the second part. But because of our bias, I think we need to put um, a bit more emphasis and more um, detail into actually getting to know our uh, audience. In return, that can actually simplify the whole experience a lot. Um, and what do I mean by that? Uh, you need to know. So it's important that you know your audience so where they are and why are they there, meaning you need to know how, they, how much NICs they know, that's clear, how do they get to this point, and more importantly, where do you want to go? It, once you have all of these things, making a cu curriculum, or it can even be done on the fly, right, on the spot, right? Even if you're teaching a class, I would first ask you where we are, how much NICs do you know? If you are in a company setting, you can imagine, you will first say like, okay, why do you think Nix will solve your problem? Right? There are a lot of assumptions come from, well, marketing, <laughs> that they might be misunderstood because it's, you know, in a five letter uh, sentence, it's hard to convey all the, the features and there is a lot of features of Nix. Uh, so it's really important to know how they got to the to the place they are, where they are, and where they are going uh, in terms of learning NICs. Uh, you can cut a lot of teaching, actually, just from knowing this. And I, I know this sounds very, like, I already know this. I'm here to just remind you of this. I know you know this. But the next time you will be in front of the people. Oh, this is going to sound so weird. Think of me, <laughs> right? Please get to know your audience. Next thing important is you need to, th that's actually the, one of the most important things. You need to find the right place and time, right? It's not important, uh, it's not, let's put it this way. If I have a bad day, no way you're going to convince me to learn to sit down about anything. It's Friday, it's afternoon, it's basically now. That's just not the right time. If we are just before the release uh, of next Flux version, don't talk to me that day, right? Timing is important. Place, equally. You need to know, to get them in the same room, like the, the best way is if you can physically interact. Yes, a lot of time this is not the only, it's not possible. Teams are distributed. I mean, I like to work remotely, right? Remember? Uh, so in the most settings, it's going to be remote. But what you can do is find your students, your audience, at the right time and place. Meaning, Matthew, you want to work? on Monday on a PR together, like just, I need some help with Nick's. I'll really appreciate it. This kind of stuff, sorry to, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> yes, but put your teaching in the process. PRs, as anything, yes, they are reviews, but use them also as a teaching tool. It's, when I, when I ask 
when I go uh, review some PR, it's not because I'm smarter than the person and I will you know, double check his code. No, a lot of times I go because I want to learn, right? Now, bringing this into a culture to your company takes time and it's actually convincing people, right? So uh, it's going to be hard, but once you get there, Forget, this is like, it's not only about Nick's, it's also about other stuff. How do you learn, how do you teach? It's, you have to change the culture. I know it's hard, but you will find them at the right place, at the right time. They will have time, everything, and you will be able to convince them. Uh, well, convince them. They will have open head to receive certain information. So, crucially, it's really important. Uh, another tactic which uh, I vigorously uh, employ is, um, today we had, was it today, uh, Jacek, today hold, held the workshop or what, is it tomorrow? Uh, training session. Somebody knows? No? Tomorrow? Um, so it's tomorrow, but it's going to be hard, right? Uh, two hours, maybe more, sitting in the same room. Doing this remotely is going to be even harder, <laughs> right? Uh, you want to sit in a meeting for three hours plus, right? It had explodes. So take it step by step and do one, I don't know, have an open office hours where you come together as a co company. Your, most of the company, remote companies already do that, but maybe have a special group um, where you rotate and you solve each other's problems once a week. It will really take you far. And as this goes, don't take the joy of somebody discovering Nix. That's also really important. Nix is fun to learn. Actually, anything is f fun to learn, the, and that joy of aha moment that we all get, got when we learn next, don't take this away from them, from your, let's say, co-workers that you try to teach. Let them get to that point themselves, right? Um, okay, I didn't run out of batteries. Um, the next thing, which I think, for me, this goes sort of in reverse. The most important is now the last one. Engineers are humans too. Um, I mean, uh, we know we are humans, I get it, but we, I think about myself, I thought about myself that I'm really rational, um, that I consider my choices. Um, yeah, that I consider my choices carefully, that I was like, what are pros and cons, and I will, you know, figure it out, and I will do the metrics for everything I use, and uh, who uses Emacs here? There? Good. Can I convince you? Uh, Vim is better. I will tell you why. It will not work, right? It, there is just too much of a human emotion there that you just saw, like blank screen. It's like, no, please don't talk to me about Vim, right? I'm happy in my Emacs world. So the same happens when you go to, to, uh, to a room full of Docker engineers and you tell them, hey, you're doing it the whole thing wrong. I'll teach you how you will do this. Won't work, <laughs> right? So humans, you need to slowly and carefully approach. <laughs> uh, don't, don't bash their software. Like, I, I really get already PTSD when I see in some talks, not so many, that uh, Docker is evil, Docker is bad, use Nix, you know, like, I get it, we are really passionate, we want to put in front our tools, but it's not, uh, it's not the way to do it. Uh, I'd rather say Docker loves Nix, in reverse, put the heart emoji in between, like, you can be a better Docker developer if you use Nix inside Docker. And actually, you can sometimes be, you know, you can use Nix at work if you combine it with the Docker. So, you know, win-win. Don't have too strong opinions on things. And let, as I said before, um, your audience, your students discover Nix on their own. You just give them cookies, spread the crumbs all around. 
speaking of humans, right? So this kind of got me to the point where, where I realized that we are just humans, also engineers. Um, so I was working at the company, and um, they, one of the goals, like, so I was doing the DevOps role, you know, the usual uh, as a contractor. Um, nothing special. One of the sub like the parallel tasks that they gave me was like, hey, please, you know, teach our, not only the ops people, but also the engineers. Like, ops people already know Nix, they love it. Teach also the developers to use it and to benefit, you know, easy environments. Uh, that's when it kind of things become hard, and I said, like, okay, we, you, like humans are uh, not rational, but we engineers are. They will understand if I give them a really easy way to enter the development environment. The next day, nobody's going to use Docker. Nobody's going to use, you know, they're just going to use Next. Not really true. Uh, everybody was nodding their head. Everybody confirmed because I went back and I did ask. Don't you think this is easy? And yes, it was easy. But they already invested so much time in their tooling, and the change is just so damn hard. Now, funny thing, two months later, uh, we, we did these weekly sessions, right? So we pick topics and we arrange them. And we have a few topics in between, and you will figure, really quickly figure it out why, which those two topics were. After two months, all team was using NixOS. Actually, not, not true. Two were using Nix uh, on macOS because you just cannot use, but they were using Nix Darwin. How did that happen? Um, I kind of appeal to their heart. So I don't have an explanation why we engineers do this, but we do it. And I think we do, like majority of engineers, 90, 80, 70, let's say 70%, probably more. But who maintains their Docker doc, uh, doc files? Yeah, could you just raise the hands. You have your doc files. We all do. Uh, and those Emacs, there is probably the other have the, the Vim people and some VS Code. Like we maintain this. We do a lot of writing. Um, I have no justification um, why I spend so much time configuring. Sorry, Vim. Uh, there, most likely, there is even not a benefit, but I really feel good when I do it, right? So I have no justification, and I still do it, and I know probably on the hackathon I'm going to reconfigure some of my config Nix, uh, Vim configuration. Uh, so rising of everything. So what happened was we talked about Home Manager. This, we actually met on Friday after, before lunch or after lunch. On Monday, Two, two, guys, like two, of the, two of the group of eight were already using Home Manager. By the end of the next week, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of the, uh, those developers were already switched to NeoVim. We, had, we came on Friday, the, 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 the topic they requested and insisted that we do was NixOS. They got hooked. They f felt the power. I couldn't convince them to use a better tool at work because, well, it was work, but you go through the heart, right? We love to <laughs> play around with our uh, doc files. That's what convinced them. So, if you want to, so uh, this was this was a bit irrational because rational person would convey would never do the doc files anyway because it's a waste of time most of the time. But it's fun, right? Because, you know, goddamn, those icons on my uh, shell, they look really nice. So, the moral of the story is um, if you need to, the, the road how to teach Nix and how to, even if you teach, you're still convincing people to use Nix. Because um, in this case, they were actually told to use Nix, so it was a bit harder. So, teaching Nix can be a funny way. Uh, and don't be surprised that in order to get your developers to use, use it for development environments, they will have to first install, they will first want to install NixOS. Funny, right? Um, yeah. Um, da -da -da -da. 
not what now what I promised you, five minutes. So if you, uh, I mean, if you employ all of those uh, things that you really get to know, it might really be just five minutes, <laughs> you know, because you will already know what they know, what they don't want, what they want to know, and maybe they really just need uh, it's just like Nick de install Nix, Nix develop, learn, teach them that small amount of Nix language so they can put things in lists, teach them how to find packages, you're done. So it could be. But the reason behind I chose this title is so I was preparing for the talk and the original talk was how to teach Nix. And you know, my son ran uh, past me and I was like, Dad, what you're doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm doing, you know, playing with computers. That's why they told me. Uh, and I was like, yeah, but what you're doing? And I was like, I'm to ri writing how to teach Nix. And I was like, ah, okay, that's easy peasy. That's his actual words. And I was like, yeah, but how long will it take you? How many minutes? I asked how many minutes it will take you to learn Nix. He said five. Um, of course, I was not satisfied because uh, you always ask why as a parent. Uh, the answer is clear. Uh, now I know, now you will know. It's because two plus three is five. And because he will be five next year. That's all the reason. So, can you learn? Can you teach Nix in, f in five minutes? No. Um, uh, you might, because you don't have to teach everything, and because you can do five minutes each week, right? That's the important part. Uh, don't take. Don't think you can teach Nix in one setting, and that you will change the mind in one go. Just one happen. It's a marathon game. Every week a bit, leave the breadcrumbs around. Uh, let your audience, your students discover Nix on their own. Uh, that's the real path to actually uh, teaching Nix. Um, thank you. Questions? <laughs> Hello? Can I have a mic? Hello? Cool, thanks. Uh, all right, two plus three equals five, who knew? Uh, questions? Raise your hands. I've got pogs burning a hole in my hand. Um, how long did it take you to learn Nix? <laughs> That's a bit unfair question, because I really need to dig. So I. I uh, well, still learning. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's actually true. I'm still learning. But that was t 10 plus years ago. Uh, I was partying every week. But it, it took me like half a year uh, when I, was, I did my first commit. I would say like I heard about Nix and my, until my first commit to Nix packages, which was in SVN. Uh, so, yeah, half a year. More questions. Can be an easy one. I gotta give these pogs away. Somebody ask him his favorite color. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Let's give thank him a round of applause. Much.